I'm Heartless Spartan. Welcome to another Halo Toy Talk. This one is about the state of the Jazzwares Halo toy line in 2023. I'm making this video within a few days after watching the Jazzwares San Diego Comic Con 2023 panel. I saw no news about their Halo line come from that panel. That does not mean the line is dead. They recently revealed that they are the master collectibles licensee for Call of Duty, and they didn't have much to reveal for a video game series as big as that either in that panel. So it's not that they're abandoning the Halo line, but rather it's just under the radar as it's being developed. The Jazzwares booth at SDCC had a sizable display of Series 7 Spartan Collection and several previously released Spartan Collection figures. While Call of Duty had an even smaller unveiling of a few figures and Ghost's mask. I heard some news in the Halo community that Series 7 of Spartan Collection figures are slated to release around the holidays, but as for the World of Halo 3.75 inch line, we may have to wait until later this year or into 2024 to hear anything at all. That's of course if Jazzwares doesn't hit us with some well-kept surprise reveal. There's also some rumors floating around about Series 8 of Spartan Collection as well. With the next school year starting soon in August, I'll be busy teaching, but I'll try to keep up on all of this. For now, I'll show my thoughts on Jazzwares and how I think it may move forward with the Halo line. Something important that I want to discuss about the toy industries and Jazzwares is the primary purpose. As a Halo fan and an avid toy collector of many different brands and franchises, I want them to come out with as many of my favorite things as they want as fast as I want them, and it's that way for, I believe, many toy buyers and collectors, whether they're adults or children, because there's still a bit of kid in all of us. Obviously this isn't feasible, and would present significant issues like too much too fast, both for Jazzwares and the consumer. One of my concerns as a collector is not being able to afford what's currently out before a toy company pushes out another wave. However, right now, I want to talk about the primary role of Jazzwares. First and foremost, it's a business. It is a company that exists to profit from the production and sale of toys. Well, obviously. But when I put it that way, it sounds cold, using words like business, company, and profit. I'll have negative connotations with major brands and corporations that have developed negative stigma for using that kind of vocabulary. It is the point, though, that Jazzwares is developing and selling the toys that we want for profit. However, what I've learned about Jazzwares as a company thus far is heartwarming. Judd and Laura Zabersky, if I'm saying their name right, uh, left their legal practice to study and start a toy company that's humble in both its origin and its business practice. Now, of course, a functional business also requires a profit, but I honestly see that Jazzwares is a brand that has the interest, well-being, and safety of the consumer at its heart. Much in the same way many think of the Melissa and Doug brand. When I watched the Jazzwares Comic Con panel, it wasn't an hour-long business spiel. It was like, here, check out which of your favorite brands we acquire to make awesome toys out of. And then the other half of the panel was to get two scary-looking All Elite wrestlers, which turned out to be a couple of incredibly friendly and heartwarming people, as they handed out exclusive action figures of themselves to children. Jazzwares even touts that it's the fastest growing toy company on their corporate website. They're not wrong, and I say that they've earned that title. I can't go down the toy aisle myself without wanting to throw something in my basket that's made by Jazzwares. Those Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron vehicles? I want them. But my wallet screams in terror any time I look in their direction, and I have to limit myself to my current collections. So I'm not picking on Jazzwares, I think they're a great toy company that's doing great work, but also has plenty of room to improve itself and grow. Now I want to talk about where things are at with the Halo brand. As much as I am a Halo fan, I have to admit that Halo is not the largest and most widely known brand that Jazzwares has in its portfolio right now. Right now, Jazzwares has Star Wars, Pokemon, Fortnite, they just announced Call of Duty, and even have some Marvel products. Compared to those brand juggernauts, Halo was dwarfed in comparison. 
Granted, Microsoft is no small company and Halo is still a major brand, though Halo itself doesn't reach as broad an audience or demographic spectrum as some of those other major brands. Even Squishmallows achieves a greater demographic spectrum than Halo because of its generalized cute characters that are more likely to be purchased by or for adults and children from the very young to the elderly. Oh, where's my grunt and hero got Squishmallows, Jazzwares? If I take that previous point into consideration, though, personally, I would consider the Halo franchise to be on the lower tier of Jazzwares' list of budget priorities. Especially given the fiasco over overstocks of Master Chief and lack of stock or availability for nearly every series. It turns out that Series 5 of World of Halo wasn't even released in the United States. Why? What prompted that decision? I don't have the answer, but my best theory is poor sales performance due to poor coordination with retailers. Which I talked about in my first video a bit. I'm not angry or trying to place blame, I'm just a bit disappointed. But things happen, some of which are beyond anyone's control given what's happened in the last few years worldwide. Now there is still hope as it sounds like the Halo line is still alive, and that Jazzwares is still moving forward with the development and sales of its Halo line. This information was brought forward by an interview done by Nostalgic Adam with the Jazzwares Halo development team about a week before San Diego Comic Con. I'll put a link to his interview in the description. If Adam happens to watch this video, thanks for organizing that interview for us fans, Adam. And thanks to the Jazzwares team for taking the time for that interview. Moving forward, Jazzwares has begun to take action to get its product out to its fans. A major step in the right direction is the creation of a direct-to-consumer website, much like Hasbro Pulse. Which I will put a link to the Jazzwares site in the description. This is a big deal, as it will skip the retail stock fiasco and prevent me from burning hundreds of dollars in fuel driving county to county toy hunting for products that might never have made it onto the shelves in the first place. It's even supposed to be collector friendly with packaging designed specifically to safely ship each item. However, as of right now, it's slim pickings for Halo on the website. I've been collecting these figures since the start, so I'm pretty good on what they have up for sale right now. But the potential for this direct-to-consumer website is astronomical. Especially since army builders, myself included, are looking to buy excessive duplicates of generic characters. The greatest and most kind-hearted benefit of the direct-to-consumer site is the access and availability to previously missed figures or entire series. For those that have already come out and those to come. I have some hope that they'll re-release -re several series and release Series 5 that was previously only available outside the United States. This way the folks that missed out on them will have access and opportunity to purchase the figures directly from Jazzwares. Knowing the rocky start to the Halo line, instead of breaking out our swords and torches and taking to the internet to rant and rave about what we've missed out on like an angry mob, the best thing the Halo community can do is show our support for the line. What a company like Jazzwares is looking for is interest. If they see that there is a widespread increase in the demand for a specific line or product, then they will likely allocate budget to grow and support it to meet the interest and demands of the consumer, and thus making a profit for the company. The community of Halo fans is a passionate one, and I think if they dig deep enough, they'll see that. I know that some of their dev team know this already. Now that Microsoft is in the process of acquiring Call of Duty, there is a likelihood that the partnership Jazzwares has with Microsoft will also grow with the potential to flourish and include other Microsoft brands into their portfolio of brands in the future. This brings me to the theory of potential profit and risk. There is always some degree of risk when allocating budget towards a particular line. This could be why lower risk brands like Star Wars and Pokemon haven't had the same issues as the Halo line has had because they're much more well-established brands. 
Halo is likely a lower priority with a greater amount of risk, and with that has the greater likelihood of profit loss instead of gains. If we want to see the Halo line flourish into something massive, we need to support it as fans and consumers. Doing things as simple as commenting on the Jazzwares Facebook and YouTube pages politely with excitement and anticipation of their line will eventually get their attention. Doing things like Nostalgic Adam did, such as conducting interviews with the Jazzwares team, shows the fans' passion, dedication, and consumer interest. It's not as though Jazzwares doesn't want to sell us the things we want. It's more likely that any kind of business would prefer not to take such a financial risk. What it comes down to is a combination of our social support as fans and our financial support as consumers. It also relies on Microsoft supporting its own brand rather than letting it slip away, which can be the subject of a different video. If I'm honest though, I was more excited about the release of the Jazzwares Halo toy line than I was about the release of Halo Infinite. For me, the toy line complemented and built Halo Infinite into something I was more willing to jump into because I wanted to see the toys in the game and the games turned into toys. It comes down to buying the product as well. Granted, fans can't buy the product if they don't have access to it, which hopefully the direct-to-consumer site will help to resolve. If we want to see the Halo line grow and flourish, Jazzwares, as a business, needs to see that there is a passionate fan community backing it up, that their investment in the Halo line will have a worthwhile return. And if that return on investment is sizable and prolonged, then we can see the line grow into something even more amazing. When the line receives investment and grows into something huge, that's when the fans get to see all the amazing deluxe figures and vehicles we dream about come to fruition. In Nostalgic Adam's interview with the dev team, the dev team themselves had their own dream figures and vehicles for the line. The senior brand manager for Halo at Jazzwares wants to see more flood forms. Jesse Hensley, the senior product designer on the team that designs all of the figures and vehicles, wants to see the new Mombasa Police Department officers made into figures. There's plenty of variation in both flood forms and NMPD figures. I'm down for both of those things. They did a fantastic job with the flood tank form. And if they make more flood forms, they should always package some amount of the parasite forms with them. One can never have too many of those. The NMPD figures have promise as well. I'd army build those. There were plenty of battles in Halo 3 ODST that featured those characters. If the line garners significant investment, then we can see the larger vehicles, and maybe even absurdly large vehicles, be released via special projects. There's even an NMPD Pelican dropship in Halo 3 ODST, Jesse, just saying. Jazzwares also seems to specialize in making that toy. The toy most people wish for, but the company seemed to dance around for any particular reason they could think of not to make it. From what I've seen of Jazzwares, they have that kind of magic to make that toy a reality. If there's going to be growth in the world of Halo Line, then it's going to start small. Many collectors want more of the large aliens, such as Brutes, but that takes a bit of finagling to get those into a wave at the same price point as other figures. The Brutes are large, they take an increased amount of the budget because they require a bulkier package, more material, more paint, and more development time to make an alien body function as a toy. As a note, the development of the Elites, Grunts, Jackals, and Brutes as functional action figures is an amazing feat, and the Jazzwares team does great work. But putting a large figure into a wave takes the budget away from the other figures. A famous example of this is all of the paint decoration removed from the original G.I. Joe action figure of the character Snake Eyes, so that the other figures in the wave could meet the budget and release at the expected quality which may explain why the world of Halo Series 6 Buck figure was so plain gray, while Atriox was included in that wave with a little extra paint decoration. 
So again, it requires an investment by Jazzwares with some degree of risk to develop, manufacture, and put out for retail what's being asked for by the fans. It's going to be a slow process, and it will start small, but it also requires the social support of the fans and community, as well as cooperation with 343 and Microsoft to do this. Jazzwares wants to be the greatest toy company in the world, and it has the potential to do just that. I can speak for myself, and I'm sure many other fans as well, when I say, Jazzwares, we've got your back. But for now, it seems I'm in for a long wait, anticipating the next bit of news about both a franchise and a toy line that takes me back to the greatest days of my childhood. This has been Heartless Spartan. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.